Welcome back to the Reloading Craft channel. In today's video, we're going to be using ballistics gelatin to compare three different projectile choices in 223 Remington and show which use cases each one might be specially optimized for. Make sure you stick around until the end because there is some surprise footage you don't want to miss. As always, if you enjoy the content you see here on the Reloading Craft channel, and specifically if you enjoy seeing tests in ballistics gel, make sure to hit that like button, the subscribe button, and the little notification bell on the side so you don't miss out of any of our future videos. And with that, let's get into some ballistics gel testing. Because this gel is brand new, the first thing I had to do upon getting it out from the box was to remove the clear, almost saran wrap type coating on the outside of the gel to keep any dirt and debris out of it. I then lined both blocks up in line with each other just in case projectile were passed through. Once this was done, According to Clear Ballistics direct instructions, you take a heat gun and gently go over the outside of it to remove any of the wrinkles which have been placed into it from shipping. This ensures a smoother surface and cleaner visibility of your hits. Alrighty, up first we're going to have Horner DV Max 55 grain. This one does include the cantalore, and I will put the velocity that this is traveling at down here on the corner of your screen. As you can see here, that did about exactly as I was expecting. Come in right here. See it came in roughly about an inch before it opened up. And when it did, it dumped a lot of that energy very quickly. See there, there's fragments of the tip. There's fragments of copper all over in here. A couple petals coming off here. And the center projectile ended up right there. If you look at the overall length of the block, that's just about halfway in, so you're looking at about eight inches of penetration with the center part, and pretty gnarly permanent wound cavity there on the back end. Again, that was the VMAX. Up next, we will have the Spear hollow point. Alrighty, up next, we have the Spear 52 grain hollow point, and again, I'll put the velocity over here in the corner. Also, keep in mind, that's our VMAX head over there. Let's get to it. Alrighty, and let's take a look at our hit here with a spear. There we are. Let me drop the brightness down so you guys can see it a little better. We got a lot of fragmentation on this one. Held the camera in one spot here. Again, we have about an inch coming in here before it really starts to open up. Maybe half inch when it starts to open. And then very violent fragmentation in through this area here. You can see there's petals going off pretty much everywhere. And then the main chunk ends up over here. I'd say that's probably about nine to 10 inches in. I don't have a ruler on me, but if you look at the block, if it actually focuses, there we go. If you look at the block, it's a little over halfway through. So I'm gonna say it's about nine to 10 inches in. Again, you have petals coming off, coming off the side. Let's look at that from the front. Camera's not wanting to focus today. Again, hit right in there. And almost immediately it started. But a little bit larger open area here. If we compare that to the VMAX, VMAX looks decently a bit more controlled. But again, about same overall penetration with each one. Up next, we'll have the Spear 55 grain soft point. Alrighty, again with this one, same deal. This is the Spear 55 grain soft point. If I can get it to focus, there we are. And again, I'll put the velocity in the bottom corner, but it's traveling. Let's do it. I'm going to try to get this one in this area right here on the right side and slightly underneath where you see the, the previous 52 grain hollow point round. Let's see. Okay, let's take a look at the wound track here from the Spear 55 grain soft point. Kind of what I've expected. Get it in frame here. Let's 
try to do it from the vertical. There we go. So again, we're starting to roughly about an inch in. That's been a common theme for most of these here. Not as big of a initial wound cavity as some of the others, like it's not blowing up. But you can see here, it continues all the way over into here. And there's a, a decent chunk of bullet still there. We, we did obviously lose some in fragmentation along through here, but it's not as significant. Let me see if I can get this from the top. Pardon the little glare off the gel here. We've got spear hollow point over here. This is the soft point. Like I said, not quite as big of a cavity, but we do come all the way over into here. It's basically under there. I'm gonna say it's about two inches in from the end. So we're looking at probably, out of a 16 inch block, I'd say 14 inches of penetration. And there we have it. So what did we learn? I think partially the results were as I expected with both of the extreme varmint rounds being the Hornady VMAX as well as the Superior Hollow Point having a very abrupt expansion and fragmentation but not giving a very large overall penetration depth. You can see here the VMAX again we got to about eight inches the spear hollow point, we're going here to probably about eight or nine inches, see on that one. And then the spear soft point, making it down here to about 14 inches, about two inches from the end of the block. Again, as we expected, and moral of the story for any hand loaders out there looking to develop some load with these, uh, if you're using one of the varmints, the VMAX and the 52 grain hollow point work exceptionally well. Again, great fragmentation, exceptional. However, if you're looking for some really need penetration, it might leave you a little bit wanting. And I'd recommend going with something more of a soft point style or something with more of a bonded jacket. I do apologize for the wind noise and the plane, which happens to be going over at the moment, but hopefully you guys will still be able to hear this. Now, out of curiosity, let's just compare this to a 22 Magnum and see what that does in the gel. Be right back. Alrighty, and up next, we're going to have a CCI Maxi Mag 22 Magnum here, coming out of a Savage Bolt Action 22 Magnum. I believe these are 36 grains at I think 1875 feet per second, but I'll have to confirm that with the box. I'm gonna try to shoot this one over here on the left edge and a little bit more towards the bottom so it doesn't interfere with the VMAX here. Let's get into it. Alrighty, that one went in exactly where I wanted it to. Let's take a look. You can see here from the top, on the right, obviously we have our VMAX. On the left is that CCI Maxi Mag, uh, the 22 Magnum. Interesting results. So we have initial expansion, again, about inch in, some fragmentation. That goes down to, I'd say, probably about five inches in or so. And then we have a very much hidden track down here with a bullet coming to rest right down there. I would say that's about four, four and a half inches from the end of the gel. Let's see if I can get it on the top. There we go. So that one definitely has a little bit higher weight retention than the 223 ones, but a decent bit less damage. Interesting comparison. The 22 mag has always been one for me that I've grabbed when looking to dispatch a groundhog cleanly and ethically. Good to see what it'll do in comparison to some of the two to three offerings. So what do you think of the results we got from today's testing? In my personal opinion, the 55 grain soft point is going to be reserved for larger varmints and possibly even as a defense round. The 52 grain hollow point, as well as the 55 grain VMAX, both make excellent small varmint bullets because of their rapid expansion and permanent wound cavity damage. Drop a comment down below if you have any experience with these projectiles, and let me know if you enjoyed today's video. Thanks as always for watching. Remember to like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and the little notification bell. 
And as always, stay safe and keep on reloading.